What is up, guys? It's Crate, and let me tell you a little story before we get into the meat and potatoes of this video. So when I first started shooting music videos, actually before I started shooting music videos, I hadn't shot anything, hadn't made a single dollar. The biggest lights to get were the Quasar Science tube lights. And I ponied up, you know, the $200 to get two of them, uh, the four foot long ones. I was like, yes, this is gonna make my music videos look so cool. And I ended up using them only about two times. So that's why I wanna talk about these lights because these lights are my most used lights that I own. When starting out, I definitely recommend the Yong Nu, uh, Yong Nyao, Yong, the YN360 lights like this one. Now when I got these, they were about $75, but now because they've made a second and third generation and these are a little bit older, I guess harder to find, they're more in the $80 to $90 range on Amazon and B&H. I actually have one of them spilling that red light over there in the back. So let's talk about how useful these lights really are. All right, so the first point I wanna make is that these lights are battery powered. They take the Sony NPF style batteries and I use the 700 series versions, about 5,000 milliamps. And I find this to be the perfect kind of middle ground between size and portability and power. I found the smaller ones to not really last me on long shoots and the bigger ones to be a lot heavier and um, not really easy to handhold or really ergonomic. Especially during running gun style shoots, you know, you definitely want that kind of mix of the two. Now you can buy a power adapter to be able to plug it into the wall, but I don't have one of those and it kind of takes away from having the portability and being able to move around without having to always carry around cords. Now the main reason you want to get these lights is for the RGB functionality as well as being able to color balance the white LEDs. All right, so let's talk about the white LEDs. It's pretty simple. You can choose with a button between 3200 and 5500 Kelvin, and you can adjust them by increments of 10 in the coarse adjustment and by ones in the fine adjustment. So at full power, these lights are super bright. This right here is at just one, and we can crank that all the way up. And this is at 100. As you can see, it probably just blows out the whole image. Even at arm's length, this thing is super bright. I'm still probably blown out. And you can mix the colors, so you can add in the warmer lights with the wider lights. And I'm assuming that if you turn all of them all the way up, somewhere in the 4000 range, you're gonna have the most light output, just not necessarily white balance to daylight. And these lights have a CRI rating of 95, so that means they're gonna be super color accurate, especially in the skin tones. On the back, there's no dial or really readout of what the temperature is. You just kind of have to guesstimate. So if you're trying to match it with your camera settings, it's not gonna be the easiest. Also, these lights came with a magnetic orange filter on the back, I guess for an even warmer look. I never use this, and so I just kind of ended up taking it off and throwing it away, but just so you know, it does come with that if you do want it. All right, so the RGB functionality is pretty similar. There's a button on the back for RGB, and that literally just means red, green, blue. So you can adjust each color individually, and the same with the lights. You can increase them by ones to all the way up to 100, and by ones to 10 or by tens, you know what I mean. And depending on the intensity of each color, you theoretically get a 360 scope of the color wheel. I will say the RGB LEDs are not as bright, and I think that's because there's less of them. Now I will say that might sound bad, but LEDs and especially the colors are not really meant to make you know your whole screen red. It's really just to add an accent and really give a vibe to your video. Now, I do want to say there is an app for these lights that you can connect to them via Bluetooth. I've never downloaded it or used it. I've never found that I really had to. I've been comfortable with the way that it is. So you can definitely use it just how it is. And the last button on the back is the battery checker. P1, I'm assuming means power. One means lowest battery and you should probably change it. All the way up to P9, which essentially is a full battery. Now another cool feature about these lights is that they have a quarter 20 screw hole thing. That's not really a technical term, but uh, that's what I call it. So you can mount these lights on a light stand and that's super useful. So you don't always have to be holding it all the time or just setting it down somewhere to try and get a look. You can set them up a little bit more properly and professionally. 
And while this is made pretty much completely of plastic, I've never once really worried about its durability. I've thrown it in my trunk, in my passenger seat, just kind of manhandled it and it's still growing. Growing? Did I say growing? It's still going. So I highly recommend these lights for shooting music videos, but really they should be in every videographer's kit because of how useful they are. I have two of these lights and that's what I recommend having because that way you can demonstrate contrast of colors. I've used them all the way from inside of a car to lighting up a nighttime scene. Like I said, these are my most used lights by far. I just wanted to talk about these lights because I feel like if you don't know, you need to know. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe and like this video and all that YouTuber stuff. So yeah. Oh yeah. Links down below.